So this is the distinction that even after a document is proved, sometimes you still have a case to say that sir, the contents of the documents are still not proved. So please be careful to remember these three stages. Filing of a document, stage number one. Production of a document, stage number two. And proving of a document, stage number three. And during proving, be careful to prove not only the documents, but also the contents of the document. Because the moment the contents of the documents are proved, then that thick document becomes foolproof. So that is how, when the document is proved, the definition of proved says that when a document is considered to be proved, when the court believes in the existence of the fact propagated, then that document is considered to be proved. If the court believes non-existence of the fact, then the document is considered to be disproved. And when a document is neither proved nor disproved, then it is called not proved. <coughs> Moving ahead, section 4 says, the court with every fact is equipped with a discretion that certain facts are presumed. <coughs> so section 4 categorizes which fact may be presumed which facts shall be presumed and which facts are conclusive proof. Now if you see the definition under section 4, may presume says that the court may believe the existence of the fact which is propagated or may ask you to prove it. So that is a discretionary situation. Now, shall presume is not much different. Shall presume also the court may ask the opposite side to disprove it. Only difference is that it may presume the court believes in the existence or not maybe asked the complainant itself to prove it. In the shall presume, the court though presumes the existence of the fact but may give an opportunity to the accused to disprove it. And in the third category, conclusive proof, the court will not allow you to disprove it. Under the category of evidences which is conclusive proof, the court will not allow any party to disprove it. So what are those Conclusive proofs? Conclusive proofs are also enumerated under the Indian Evidence Act. For example, if there is a judgment of the Supreme Court on a point of law, it is a conclusive proof for the court. The court will not allow you to disprove it. It's a conclusive proof. That in these facts and circumstances the case, this matter had gone up to Supreme Court and the Supreme Court has already passed an order in this favor. This is a conclusive proof. Where is the question of changing it? So the courts will not allow any party to disprove it. In the first two categories, may and shall presume, the court may give an opportunity to any of the parties to disprove it. Now moving ahead. Here onwards, the entire Indian Evidence Act can be divided into three categories. The whole act, if you see comprehensively, is wonderfully drafted. It's classified into three compartments. And if you read the provisions, I have come across some wonderful experience while reading in these compartments and according to me, I'm giving you this hint that once you start reading, you'll find and you'll agree with me 
that there are three parts. The first part which talks about the relevancy of facts. Now relevancy of facts runs from section 5 to section 55 and that part gets over. Section 5 to 55 is relevancy of facts part 1. Part 2 begins from section 56 and runs up to section 100. This is the second part. And the third part is from 101 to 167. Now if you see these categories, the relevancy of fact, basically the title given in the act is relevancy of fact. But if you actually try to give the act according to me, it should be evidence of what? If you give some the title, it could be easily what? Section 5 to 55 deals with the answer of what? What are you trying to prove? Fact and issue. Fact and issue. And relevant fact. And relevancy of fact is from 5 to 55. So answer to what is 5 to 55, part 1. All those provisions will be answering your what? When you are before the court, what are you trying to do? You are trying to prove fact and issue as well as the relevant fact. And what are the fact and issue and what are the relevancy of the facts is given from 5 to 55. So the answer of what is in part 1. Then part 2. Part 2 deals with how are you trying to do that? So for according to me, you should give a title to part 2 as how? How do you want to prove your document? The entire classification, the title given under Indian Evidence Act is proof. But how to prove? So the proving of document under part 2 is oral and documentary. It begins from section 59 to 60 oral document, oral statements and 61 onwards documentary evidence. Now documentary evidence is also categorized into two parts, primary and secondary. Section 62 talks about the primary documents and section 63 talks about the secondary documents. And section 64 makes a declaration then that the proving of a document should be predominantly by the primary document. So 64 says that the proving shall be by the primary. So what is primary and what is secondary? When you produce original document before the court, then it is primary document. The very document, the very statement, the very weapon, the very cloth, the very blood stained uh, tissues, everything is primary. When your original is produced before the court, that is called primary document. But sometimes there are occasions that the complainant is not having the possession of the primary document. And therefore, section 65 gives those situations in which a secondary document can be produced before the court. And the primary section 65A, <coughs> 65 subclause A says, that if the document is in the possession of the opposite party, then you can produce a secondary evidence before the court. Secondary evidence means either the certified copy or the counterpart or the true copy 
that you can produce the quote when the quote says where is the original you can say that it is in the possession of the opposite side but please remember there is a catch over here normally what we lawyers do we are so confident that the original document is with the possession of the other side so I am entitled to put the secondary document as per section 65 but there is a catch please remember before you do that issue a notice to the opposite party under section 66 section 66 of the Indian Evidence Act makes it mandatory for you before producing a secondary document that you have issued a notice to the opposite party demanding that the original be presented or produced and if the original is not produced despite your notice under section 66 then you become entitled to pre present a secondary evidence along with the copy of that notice readily accept it the second category is when the original is lost or destroyed then you'll have to prove before the court that the original is lost or destroyed so you must be having some FIR that it is missing or it is lost or it is destroyed like in 2005 when Bombay was flooded most of the documents got destroyed and the first thing which we lawyers did because I was in Juhu at that time and my office was a ground floor which was flooded with nine feet of water for three days and my first concern was how to reach the police station to lodge an FIR that these documents are destroyed so as a lawyer sometimes it becomes very responsible that you forget about your other belongings and since then I started it, uh, not accepting the original documents at all I keep the original documents with the clients I said bhai kabhi baad a jaye, kabhi bhukam pa jaye, kabhi wo ho jaye hum apna khayal hi nahi rakh sakte, hume document ka khayal rakhna padta hai to aisi situations aati hai but we have to perform as per our profession and the responsibilities to dousra ye category hai destroy ho gaya, loss ho gaya teesri bar aap secondary evidence tab de sakte hai jab secondary evidence ko opposite party ne already admit kar liya hai yes the contents are true I am not denying it. Then the secondary evidence is taken. For example, legal notice. आप legal notice जब issue करते हैं तो original तो opposite party के पास चला गया. आप उसकी copy ही office copy लगा देते हैं. तो वो office copy तो secondary document है ना? पर चूँकि original document सामने वाले को मिला है, वो object नहीं करता है, तो it becomes acceptable. That legal notice, the copy, office copy is secondary evidence but admitted. And that is why it is accepted by the court. It is exhibited. Now, likewise, <coughs> if the documents are so much in number, there are numerous accounts which cannot be brought to the court, then secondary evidence is accepted. Or there is a situation when the original document cannot be moved. There are situations which original cannot be moved. So either the court will have to go to inspect at the spot if the court wants to do a primary document evidence or if it is proved that the original cannot be moved 